Welcome back, everybody. This is Untitled and Focused. That is Raymond. I am Tyler, as always. And uh, yeah, more anime this week. We're closing in. It is funny. I feel like last week we mentioned this, but we're close to finishing like all of our shows. I mean, Brockamon in particular, because it's so short. Yeah, but like it was unintentional to do like a three or it's like six episodes, like all in one chunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, if we were recording all those weeks right now, <laughs> we would still be where we're at. And so yeah. it's still like <laughs> we're close, man. It's cool. Um, yeah, good stuff. So, um, right off the rip, I will say, you mentioned that uh, you know, whole anime thing. I did. I am close to finishing uh, Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Okay. Um, it's good. I'm on like I episode nine it. or something. It's good. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, Trigger does it, and they make some pretty good stuff. At least like visually, Trigger is always really <laughs> good. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I, I I never really had too much interest in playing the game, but like watching the show was like maybe you know I never I I know I never will play. I'm never gonna buy it. But like a little bit of me is like hmm, it's pretty cool. No, I will say with the DLC that they just dropped, they do have a lot of references to Edge Runners. Ooh, that's cool. That's cool. Okay. So, like, like no spoilers there, but they have a lot, and then like they also have Easter eggs in the main game for the, the Edge Runners. I think you can get the Edge Runner jacket. Ooh, that's cool. That's pretty sick. So. Yeah. So, like, like they they got like they obviously added they added stuff post anime, but like it's still pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Like a side quest for that. <laughs> I'm sure that was like a no-brainer because at launch, the only thing people really liked about Cyberpunk was the show. Like, the game was getting panned <laughs> for a while. The game, at least for like the past couple years, have been good. I know, I, I know, at launch, that game was screwed at launch, and it had the No Man's Sky effect where they just like patched it out and everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yep. Yeah. It just took a bit to get it done. <laughs> but once they did, it was a good game. <laughs> which i feel like is the opposite of how like starfield is going right now i feel like people pretty universally enjoy that game which is like kind of the same thing like a big open world but this one kind of launched and was like oh no it's good <laughs> finally was it the only i mean the complaints i'm hearing about starfield there's a couple of them you know like the map and ui stuff and like people's expectations for the game but that stuff i think will be like fixed in modding or even like post-patch development so which I feel like Bethesda is like the one studio that relies on mods as like their like culture, you know? Yeah, they they've cultivated that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's always at the point where I think they have like an official mod store where it's like ones that they like give the check yeah. mark to. It's like, oh, you can you can get these, you can download these for like the deluxe edition. They're like, we'll package these mods in with it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you can try it with this. Yeah. That's cool. Um, yeah, I don't know anything else. So uh, we have Momosuit Gundam. <laughs> I forgot the name of the show. Uh, Orphans 16 and 17. It's called IBO at this point, but that's just me. Yeah, I, I usually say that, but I was like, I'm going to say the full name this time. And then it just didn't happen. And I realized why I don't say the full name. Dude, you know, I feel like that's, that's really inconsiderate of them to like name something and have it have so many words it's really inconsiderate it's like you know? mobile suit gundam colon iron blooded orphans yeah the definitive edition you know it's like it's just, it's just too much we don't need all those words nana nah. you know you know how simple that is <laughs> it's two syllables <laughs> and the, and each syllable is the same thing <laughs> nailed it nailed yeah. it yeah um so, so how'd you feel about uh ibo this week ray it's two up at 16 and 17. IBO? You know, I think I'm going to say it. I think IBO was a a sleeper hit this week. Yeah? I mean, compared to other weeks, you know what I mean? Like, it's like a sure, pretty sure. strong two episodes. We managed to get... We get big Kudelia development. Finally taking a stand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wrote down that. Um, I feel like Kudelia is living up to her reputation. I feel like we're finally seeing her like do stuff instead of you know she's talked a big game up until this point but we haven't really had opportunities to see her 
actually impact anything. It's just kind of like, it's like mm. that that end part. I think it was literally like the end of episode 17 when she had her like speech or whatever. You know mm-hmm. what made me think of? It made me think of uh, Katniss. Um, okay, that's a good Hunger that's Games. a good example for that. Yeah, where it was you like, brought up Hunger Games as well? I'll add on something later. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. Um, because like that's kind of how she was. Where she was different. She like she didn't go into it being like I'm gonna be this figurehead. She just kind of like stumbled into it and then she like loved the cause because her like District Twelve or whatever. Um, but it kind of reminded me of that where it's like I'm gonna get on the big screen. We're gonna go. You know, I'm gonna give you my thoughts. I'm gonna tell you what's really going on, that sort of thing. So uh, that's cool. Big fan of Katniss. So if she <laughs> if she has <laughs> she has more similarities with her. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. Yeah, what was it? You re- just another weird thing to point out that happened in Hunger Games. Like, the first book was going to end with them committing suicide, Katniss and Peta. But they were like, we're going to die on live TV. Yep. And then they're like, no, 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 cancel. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're like, the, the people love you too much. We got to keep you both alive. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because like if, if they actually went through with it, like that would have yeah. destroyed because <laughs> destroyed everything. <laughs> oh, the, yeah, because like in what, what was that like the seventy like fourth, right? Seventy fourth yeah. Hunter Games. It's like for the first time ever, there's no winner. What do we yeah. do? What, what are we gonna do? And so we couldn't have that. They just pick new people. That's all they do. It's, it's but like yeah, yeah. Um, Total chaos there. Yeah. And then I've heard that the whatever the new movie adaptation is i've heard that book is like apparently her best one she wrote for the series the prequel one like song of like yeah it's like snakes and sparrows yeah something like that yeah mm-hmm. yeah I, I, or a ballad of snakes and sparrows yeah that, that, that's ballad of right. songs and sparrows or snakes or i don't know some song ballad of ice and fire song. yeah whatever. um yeah, yeah i think that's actually the biggest book too i think it's bigger than any of the three in the trilogy i think it's just yeah. the meaty book yeah i never yeah, got around to reading that one. one and i because i was looking around and i was like because i'm like i heard it's pretty good mm-hmm. uh those ones and i mean like now let's be real we've read hunger games and all the other ones like you know yep. they're not bad books they're good they're enjoyable they get their message across pretty well i think i have an appreciation for it even more so because like when i read all three of them i think i read them in elementary school maybe like sixth grade i think is when they were like releasing when like the mm-hmm. last one maybe i don't know um very good right but i think looking back i have even more of an appreciation for him because you see how suzanne collins like birthed this whole thing of like teenage dystopian genre right she kind of like popularized it and so there was like yeah. so many copies. like it was already going up and then she like spiked it yeah, with she, the yeah she was like oh <laughs> you you know cracks knuckles <laughs> you know i'm gonna i'm gonna throw my hat into it's this again, ring like like the, the books were already there she happened to come out with a banger one mm-hmm. that's very easy to attract attention with and then i think there was so many copycats because it was just oh it's popular you know um and n- none of the copycats that i've read have been as good as hunger games they've all been like ah, oh, they're kind of missing something you know i know it's not the uh, it is the anime podcast on the book podcast but like i know we've I've talked about the Red bit of Divergent series for like the first yep. two books. Read like most of like Maze Runner, I believe. Literally, like I don't remember anything about those two books. You can ask me something and tell me that happened. I'm like, yeah, of course they did. Cause yeah, I don't know. I've, uh, <laughs> I've never read Maze Runner. I do want to read that. I, w- I watched the movies, which I guess isn't mm-hmm. super indicative. Um, I did read all the Divergent books, and the first book really good. The first book really? is solid. Then the second book is like, okay. <laughs> and then the third book is like, this This is a bad series. <laughs> I know? dropped the third. I was like three or four chapters in, and I just like dropped it. Yeah, I think, um, I think I actually saw this. I think someone made like a post in like, just like r slash books or whatever about <laughs> all those like teen dystopian ones. And it's like, there's a trend where the first book is usually really good. And then the author like doesn't know where to take it from there. And the second and third book or more, you know, are like bad. And it's like if they just kept the idea of the first book, you know, because I think that's another thing, too, that um, has happened a lot in the past probably like 20 years is like every story needs to be a trilogy. 
Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, no, it doesn't. If you just have one solid book's worth of ideas, just write a single book, you know? Like, mm -hmm. you don't have to stretch everything out to be a trilogy or a quadrology. Maybe you need to have a duology, you know? Maybe, you know? No one ever two does books. duologies. Have you noticed that? There, there's never just it's two so, books. If we should have popularized duologies. Maybe you can have a part one and a part two. I mean, look at The Godfather. That's true. Are there only two Godfather movies? There's a third one, I believe. Like, uh, The Death of Michael Corleone. But no one talks about that one, though. Because <laughs> it's bad. Because they tried to make a trilogy. Tried to yeah. capitalize but off see, of it. see, Godfather and Godfather Part 2, though? Universally praised. Considered two of the best films. And they often compete for each other for maybe we won't. Because they're some of the best movies of all time. <laughs> or, um... American Civil. You got, uh, you got Kill Bill. Volume 1, Volume 2. Mm -hmm. Never seen them, but I know that people like them. Yeah, it can happen, but it, but but no one ever does it because like, it is funny because it you know it's also like uh, it's almost like human brains, right? Where usually, or at least this is how my brain works, right? Where it's like even numbers, very, very nice to look at, right? Mm -hmm. But for some reason, three, well, you know, when it comes to books or even movies, three just feels more complete than two. I think that's true. Right? I think when you have like a set of stuff that you're looking at, mm -hmm. having three plus is good. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, anything to like add infinity, right? You're like, well, that's, you know, that's a sizable series, you know? Yeah. Two, you're like, that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because two for some reason feels like either they, they stretched one or they like didn't quite have enough for three <laughs> you know like two's so, like, fine but it's it, well, it, it, the answer then so the answer is like if you're gonna write books either write one book that's like really long yeah. instead of writing two books or if you have enough actually just put three yeah yeah do it <laughs> just do it just make one really big book if two books is the option unless the two books are really going to be big and you have to do it like that, then do it. I mean, no other no complaints. Then you might as well just do four, you know? See, we're doing the math right now. Yeah. <laughs> the math all checks out, you know? So uh, I think I gotta get back into books, because that one does one I gotta check out. Yeah. I'm gonna get back into books real soon. Uh, right now, though, still an anime podcast. But... It is still an anime podcast. Um, I am... You'd be like halfway, halfway through Poon Poon. Okay. Um, I just have some thoughts, right? So, I, so, so I will say, for you know, you know, for all the listeners, you have read this, right? You read it front to back. Read it front to back. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm about halfway through it. Um, this is so last episode yeah, this, actually. This has been like seven years ago at this point, maybe eight or seven or six years ago. So like. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. You know, what's funny is last episode I mentioned um, my thoughts on Chainsaw Man, right? And how I feel like the the anime isn't, and I don't, and I'm not even sure it can capture some of the, the, like, atmosphere of the manga. I just don't know that's possible. If it is, if they do it, good on them. Um, but I feel like that kind of carries over to Poon Poon a little bit. Not with them making an adaptation. I don't. I don't think they're going to. Um, but I don't feel good reading this. <laughs> you good. Know? Like, I think I think this is exactly what they wanted you to do. <laughs> like everything that happens, I'm just like this. Is, this isn't like it's it's very well written, and I'm gonna finish it obviously. Um, but just like obviously, the author wanted you to feel this way, where it's like I don't really feel for any of the characters. Like even the main character, it's like there's still things that he could be doing to change what's happening with him, you know? Mm -hmm. um, some of stuff's out of his control, but, like, there's so many things that happen to him or at other people where I'm just like, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely insane. This is, like, the most extreme, um, just, like, unfortunate events to happen to all these, like, you know, like, certain characters dying or certain, um, certain acts that take place and it's like oof i don't know if that's what 
I would have done. I don't know if I would have also let that happen to me. <laughs> I would have maybe said something. Um, yeah, yeah. And even like, and, and, and another part of it, you know, because Chainsaw Man's talking about how, you know, how like uneasy you can feel reading at a certain time, you know, especially with like some of the, some of the delivery of the dialogue, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's, you know, it's very, uh, very true to that author, right? Because, you know, he's the same one that did like Fire Punch and stuff like that and Good uh, <laughs> Goodbye airy right yeah um it's very consistent over his stuff or her stuff um but with this one a lot of the uneasiness comes from the main character being a child and like other children being way more philosophical than i feel like i was as a child <laughs> where it's like I, th these are conversations you know what i mean that like i don't understand how like just you're allowed to just be a child <laughs> you don't have to think about like being an adult or like dying or like leaving your mark on the world you know what i mean um even um i'm not gonna spoil anything but uh poon poon the main character has like I don't, I don't think the arc is finished yet but he has this like whole arc with this with this girl child as well uh named aiko um and like aiko is a freak <laughs> for many different reasons and i'm just like i don't know how to pin her character because she she like says certain things she like acts a certain way um and then like time skips happen and i'm just like this character doesn't make me feel good <laughs> I, I, I have to just read past this you know so yeah so uh, that's that's all i want to say we're very very well written and there's this is like red flags the manga um, or like, or like death flags, I guess the manga, I feel like everyone's just going to die at the end. Um, and some like weird, like cult, like suicide pact. Um, but yeah, very good. And I hate reading it and I can't wait to be done reading it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you're right. You pretty much that nailed the... like when he oh. dies, like the, the, the fun, 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 definitely is like a, a weird sort of tragedy story where we the third person can see everything that's going on and just watching it unfold <laughs> right that's good uh if you do like this guy's up but he has another manga dead demons the 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 destruction i think i had the right amount of does there <laughs> oh yeah i think <clears throat> yeah i think i have that in mind on my list but i, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I didn't know that was by the same person mm-hmm that one is not, I mean, like, Bun Bun kind of comes out front and tells you, like, what this is going to be within the first couple of chapters. Yeah. Dead Demon's da -da 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 Destruction, like, takes a while for it to unfold and actually understand what's happening there. But once it does, I mean, it, it pays off. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think something else that adds to it is... like all the main characters like the main character's family they're like little mm -hmm. like bird like drawings they're not like real people mm -hmm. like you know like everyone around them is like very mm -hmm. it was drawn very detailed actually um but then other than that all the like all the characters that don't mean anything like all the little background characters and stuff they all talk and act like not real people like they're all like wildly cartoonish but like like they move all cartoonish but the things they say is like weird dark humor just like was was that a joke like like i don't you know like them like making jokes about like <laughs> their like wife dying or something mm -hmm. and it's just like ha ah, just kidding and they're like doing this weird dance and i'm like is this just like what poon poon sees through his eyes or they're actually acting this way like this is very strange <laughs> so yeah yeah i mean i mean you know i you know i think that is part of it as well again i haven't finished it so i don't know like looking back what all the themes are and all that stuff but i do think that that might be part of it because i feel like the the main character poon poon is like you know you mentioned like a tragedy like he is very depressed he is very like We've seen anime like this before, but it goes the other way, where it's like, oh, they meet friends, and this is a nice, 
comfortable slice of life show where they break out of their shell and they get friends and they do stuff and it's nice. But Poon Poon's the opposite where it's like, what if that doesn't happen? What if just like everything, what if he falls down the stairs? You make like one right choice, but then you make three wrong choices afterwards. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's just like, you're just hitting every stair on the way down, you know? (laughs) So it's... Again, it's it's very sad, you know. You're right. You have to be in like, the right mind to read it and everything. It's just like this is this is not this is not a fun time. <laughs> not a fun time reading this. It does pull you in, though. That's the problem with it. It's the left in what you want to read, what you want to see what happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like how like Breaking Bad at the end of the day mm-hmm. is a a tragedy, right? Mm-hmm. It's a very tragic story. Um, but there's you know Walt getting a, getting a lot of dubs throughout the show you know <laughs> boon boon just L's. <laughs> nothing but else the whole just, time just hard L's. have you Even... seen god yet in the yeah right okay yeah, yeah. he's like an god example of like it. another like insane thing yeah well <laughs> well there's like two because like poon poon talks to god quote unquote but then like one of his friends or maybe like or maybe they're not I yeah. mean, af- after the time jump i don't think they're really friends anymore he also mm-hmm. sees god but it's like like a children's crayon drawing that he sees everywhere like ufo <laughs> and stuff like that so um yeah 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 it it kind of reminds me of um lord of the flies right how all this terrible this terrible situation terrible decisions that these people have to make but then you remember they're all kids <laughs> you know <laughs> they're all children you know so i feel like that's kind of what what poon poon is doing as well it was like they're all children having to deal with all this you know mm-hmm. and then the time skip happens <laughs> yeah and there's a time skip yeah i think it's like a few years i mean right now i'm in I think Poon Poon is still in high school. I think he might be like a senior or something like that. Mm-hmm. He's like high, high school. I don't think he's graduated yet, but um, yeah. And everything comes back, and it's like oof. And people die, you know. A lot of, a lot of deaths. A lot of, you know. Whenever you think Poon Poon's gonna get, you know, gonna get a win, someone dies. <laughs> it's like oof. Bad, you know, sad stuff, you know. Yeah. I'll try to finish it at some point. I don't, I don't think I've read it in a few days. I haven't really felt like reading, but uh, yeah, I'll read it and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about the ending. Yeah, but one's weird because it does show you like the uh, the darker sides of humanity. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's like weird lines. It is all rainy days. Every, every chapter is a rainy day. It, it's good. I mean, I don't think I'm ready to reread that one yet. <laughs> I'll reread other stuff, but I don't think. Like, just Pun Pun just makes me feel awesome. <laughs> yeah. And again, like, I'm like thinking it's... about stuff that happens later in the manga, and uh, I'm already, like, feeling a certain way. <laughs> yeah. It's bad. Again, th- th- this, sh- <laughs> this manga, opposite of Bochi the Rock. Okay. Complete opposite. It... Pochi starts at the bottom and goes up. Yeah. Pun Pun starts at the, the top and goes to the bottom. Well. Uh, he doesn't start at the top, but like. <laughs> he starts at the bottom and digs somewhere. down. <laughs> you know? Uh, um, so, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, you talk about a lot of stuff happened. I do like, uh, we see a lot of the world. In these couple episodes, um, mm-hmm. you know, obviously, like, you know, like the big surrounding event is with all the protesters, right? Them kind of doing their thing, and then they, and then they get framed, which is very Gundam. I feel like you know a lot of politics behind the scenes, making making things happen. Um, yeah, yeah. So I mean, now we're kind of at a point where, again, kind of reminds me of the Hunger Games when the one district uh, rises up. Um, but yeah, that is kind of where we're at in the show, I feel, where it's like, okay, this is like, this is war now, because both sides can't really back down. Um, yeah. 
Um, yeah. Galahorn comes up at the end, you know, they're doing their fun stuff. They're there. Mm-hmm. Got a new Gundam in the mix. Another Gundam. I forgot the name of the Gundam. That, that other the, named one. That was the pink one? That that dude came out? No. Or was the, nah. the, like, the, like the brown one? one? Oh, okay. The other side. The the blue haired guy pulled out his gun though. Oh yeah, it was like it was like purple and they were like, Oh man. This is crazy. Like, it was another name than like Barbados from yeah. the war. So that's like another it's a treasure, you know. He was fighting Mika, right? Is that the one you're talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was good. Uh but then but then they just like overpowered him, right? They just like outmanned him and then they had to like retreat. Um yeah. yeah, yeah, I did make a note here, Ray. I thought I thought you would like um, the antagonist in the show. They they just talk too much. <laughs> they talk way too much. It reminded me I of uh, just a, is that is that a space opera thing? Or like maybe. you just got to get ready for talking? I get, I don't know. It it, it kind of reminded me of a uh, civil war, not the historical event, but the Marvel movie. Um, when, uh, I think Falcon, now Captain America, talks to, uh, you know, talks to Spider-Man, you know, cause Spider-Man's like talking the whole time when they're fighting. It's like, oh man, you got, you got a, you got a metal arm, you got wings, that's crazy. And then Falcon is like, you know, people usually don't talk this much when they're fighting. <laughs> it's a, you know, you know, a, you know, a nice little comedic, uh, moment there. But yeah, there's a whole thing happened in this one too, where it's like the like blue haired guy, like you mentioned, he's just talking the whole fight. He's just talking about how like he's reminded he's they gotta watch Legend and, of the Galactic Heroes. Oh man, I bet I bet your little child brain couldn't couldn't match this move. And I'm just like, stop talking, <laughs> just fight and win, or 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 lose. You know, why why, why are we talking so much? It's like these guys, these are kids. How are we losing them forgetting the Alana Vidyana system exists? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. You gotta eat. It's like this man, like, you can see the Gundam that he's fighting in. <laughs> you have eyes. It's like, he's got a legendary Gundam, dude, from the war. Yeah, the war. The only war. Every other Gundam is considered obsolete because it's in survival war. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll give Gundam some props on this, actually. The fact that, like, these legendary Gundams survive war, you know, it's just once again showing. It's kind of realistic. Because you would think, like, post war, that, like, they would keep up with the technological advances. But they're like, we don't need these weapons post war. So we're just going to go into, like, actually trying to build up, like, everything else. Like economy and like farming and all that. That's why Mars is pretty much a slave district. Mm-hmm. You know, like it makes sense. They're just trying to build up. They don't need all that weaponry after the war. Like big weaponry, you know? They need small weaponry that they can easily move people around with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it makes sense. Like the um, <laughs> big event happening and then that kind of making them have to focus on whatever they need to rebuild back up. Like you're saying, it's like, okay, we don't, like we're done fighting. We can put our, or scientists and all that stuff on on, on like different projects. I can really, I mean, like, let's use real life for this, okay? Like we're not developing more nukes, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like no, like, I mean like right now at least like it's mostly like doing stuff with drones or like working on like firearms, you know, mm-hmm. other planes or helicopters, you know, tanks. Right. Because <laughs> they're smaller, you don't need something super large scale. <laughs> You only need so many nukes. You know what I mean? Yeah, you only need so much. <laughs> That's what a Gundam is, though, essentially. In a weird way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely on, like, a bigger <laughs> scale, right? Because they can... Yeah. They have, like, space warfare. Where mm-hmm. we don't... To our knowledge, we don't. Yeah. Did you see that, uh... Um... I don't know if we talked about this, the, like, Mexican president... Was like, hey guys, we got. I saw the weird alien rock. We got some aliens for you, and everyone online was like, 
What are you talking about? <laughs> are you stupid? Alien <laughs> Rock is a good meme. It's good. So dumb. He's like, huh? Huh? Is it, is it, do you like this? And we're like, no. <laughs> what do you mean? It literally looks like, like E.T. This? Literally looks like a, a, a rubbery character that was made 70 years ago. What are you talking about? Um, That's an alien. That's for real, for real. It's for real, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, anything else for IBO, Ray? I don't, I don't have any other notes. No, I think it's pretty easy to cover. It's good episodes. Where would you rank this for the four of the week? Oof. Um, well, I... Okay, so there's a thing. Well, I mean, probably second? Because, I'm, I mean, we'll, we'll get to other shows, obviously, but, like... Brockamon, I feel like, was, like, a little low this week, in my opinion. I feel like that was probably last. And then Summertime, enjoyed Summertime. But I feel like it was just, like, a lot of information. Which is good for the next episodes. But, like, it didn't hit as much as, like, last week. Summertime is built, it's building up. Because they're trying to, with the limited time frame they're doing, they're giving us a lot of info dump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we, we definitely, I mean, there's, there's, like four pieces of information that's like hey did you know shadows can do this and i'm <laughs> like i did not but thank you and so yeah i mean that would be a useful tool later <laughs> yeah i will remember that <laughs> and uh yeah, yeah i mean and same as you just said like we're nearing the end like we have um eight eight episodes left yeah i think it's 25 yeah yeah so eight episodes so we're we're like on the back third or i mean that's really the, the third act right <laughs> Um, so yeah, they do kind of have to like give us any everything else that can come back. Uh, do you think we're getting it with a reset? Um, I think I'll go back in time one more time. Um, that's tough because I feel like he they made it a point to be like, hey, they they live through the night. They did it. They slept. They woke up. It's now a new day, a new dawn, right? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like you can. I don't know because I'm gonna say no. Mm. I'm gonna say no because I just don't think it's necessary. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, because this is really feeling like. We are. Everyone has their this place. Is this we're is like, it, right? Yeah, yeah. We're like, okay, team A, team B, team C. Like, you know, we all have our little areas that we're, you know, there's, you know, there's like a plan we're 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 uh, we're constructing. So yeah, I don't think he's going to die again. Um, yeah, I don't. I just don't think it's necessary. I mean, especially with like how some of the characters are talking. Where it's like this feels like fight because like their last fight felt like it could be the final fight but now looking at yeah. how they're talking to each other and like planning certain things like, oh no, no no this feels like we have everything now <laughs> we have all the pieces mm -hmm. we have you know like there's nothing really more we can do to prepare now we just have to execute a plan where the when do we lose like that's it you know and then like there's multiple times where they mention how weak the, the queen or the mom or, or you know whatever she's called Heine right is that her yeah name? um you know how weak she is and like even when they were I mean we're talking about summertime rendering now but um uh Shadow Mio you know this is another like info dump where Shadow Mio was like hey shadows can copy people or they can give birth it's not crazy it's like, oh, we can only give birth once, but Hyena can give birth many times. Uh, lucky for her, right? It's mm -hmm. all of our dreams. Um, but then, but then she's like, ah, but it's tough for her because she's like super weak right now. She's never been this weak. <laughs> like she makes it a point to say that. So again, like with that, I'm like, that feels like the best opportunity because if you know, because if he dies again, it's gonna set everyone back. It's gonna be tough. 
Um, yeah. That's what I think. I mean, like, the shadow dying can't be copied again. Which is interesting. Thinking, uh, thinking Shadow Mio has a big death flag on her head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, because they're probably only going to use her temporarily. We'll probably see her do, like, one more thing. And then she's out of here. She's gone. Mm -hmm. the, the only shadow ally we can have is Ushio. And then you, 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 you mentioned Death Flag. I, I feel like <laughs> the real Mio has a, has, a, has, has a little bit of a Death Flag on her as well. <laughs> you know, because you know, this whole time, <laughs> this whole time Shadow Mio has been trying to like expose her, <laughs> uh, you know, to, uh, you know, to Shinpei. And then, and then she's like, hey, hey Shinpei. I got something I gotta tell you, so you you can't die. You know, because you have to come back, so I can tell you what I have to tell you. And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, that's that's not. You can't just say that. I mean, that's man, Mio dying just before she says I love you, Oof. or she dies right after that. That's tough. That's probably what she's taking happen, part else. <laughs> yeah. I thought like your name was like pretty hard L's so, like I think about the your name L's like in a row. Got like the the hand right. Then you got falling off the bike and then looking at the hand and then just seeing he says I love you. Yeah. And you're like this doesn't Tough. help me at all. Nothing about the last 10 seconds has been helpful. <laughs> um, She's like I can't even remember your name or your face. <laughs> this is the name of the movie you fool. <laughs> Don't you know? Um, uh, another moment here reminded me of The Walking Dead, right? Have you, ever, have you ever watched any of The Walking Dead? No. No, good. Don't don't do it. Good. Um, I'm already on there. Me and Negan hang out all the time. Oof, that's. Oof, oof. Um. There's a moment in The Walking Dead where one of the main characters uh, is, is confronted. No, no, it, stop, no. stop. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down now. Um, one of the main characters is it, is confronted with a walker, uh, otherwise known as a zombie, uh, version of their wife, and like that's like the first time that we kind of deal with. What would you do, right? Like, like, would you have the like mental fortitude to kill your wife or just any relative who is now a zombie? And like, you know, there is no cure. There is no like getting them back. Like they're gone. But if they were mm -hmm. threatening your life, like if they were coming after you, or maybe one of your alive family members, like, would you be able to kill them? Right. It's kind of the whole thing there. It's very early on in the show when you know when the show was still kind of like tackling some very interesting ideas before it just became like a like a fast and furious action show um and so this is kind of uh, we have the moment in this show too right where where nezu mm -hmm. is kind of dealt with that scenario where he has a shadow kind of like a rogue shadow you know like acting very crazy uh version of his wife right it's like oh i kind of kept her here you know she or i guess it sort of you know killed my wife took her face <laughs> um and then it does end with with him with him shooting her right mm -hmm. so that was very interesting especially just like more stuff with nezu right because like he's kind of been with our group this whole time but we don't really know too much about him yeah he's just kind of been like the silent guy who's just like uh he does what he's told yeah. and he does it well yeah usually mm -hmm. yeah and so just to see more of him and like some like introspection inside of his character is nice because he's again he's really the only like main character we've we haven't seen that from so now we know more about him now we're a little more attached again are they just building up his death to actually mean something to us possibly you know possibly possibly he has no regrets now he can die yeah only we throw his life away 
Who's getting their own? Is there, I heard there's a Walking Dead spinoff. I don't know if you know of this. Um, there's actually where about someone goes four to France. Walking Dead. What? Someone goes to France. Yep, that's Daryl. Yep. That's Daryl. Okay, I saw the trailer for that. Like, I'm gonna just break it down you for you, Ray. I'm gonna just break it down for you. I need to stop talking. I'm gonna break it down for you. Okay. We got <laughs> The Walking Dead. That's the main show, right? Then we got uh, Fear the Walking Dead. That is a show. That's where they talk about The Walking Dead, right? Uh, nope. That is Talking Dead. You, you just ignorant. <laughs> You <laughs> no culture. Okay, that is Talking Dead. Okay, that is that's a talk show. You well, it's Fear the Walking Dead. All of that. That's, that's, that's such an idiot. Okay, and we got Fear the Walking Dead. Right, that starts closer to the outbreak, and then just turns into another Walking Dead show, which is whatever. Okay, okay. okay. So this is Talking Dead. No, no, that's Fear the Walking Dead. You. No, no, this is this this, this this is Walking Dead. This is Fear the Walking Dead. Now. This is Talking Dead. Talking Dead, where they were every week after the episode Walking Dead comes out, they have talking dead where they talk about walking dead okay it's in the name and then you have uh walking dead world beyond now this is walking dead but with children and it's also a limited series there's only two seasons uh it's just walking dead with kids and then you have um you have uh the daryl dixon show which where he goes to france how did he get from america to france they'll never tell and then you have um you have the rick and michonne spinoff right where they meet up they're doing crm stuff right um andrew lincoln's back right that's cool um so you have that and then we have uh dead city now that's in new york city that is with negan and maggie they're doing stuff um and then you have Tales from the Walking Dead. Now, you would think that's about Tales from like Sonic. the feature. No, you would be wrong. It's a, it's a, it's a anthology series. Other stories in the Walking Dead universe, okay? Um, and then you have a trilogy of movies. Now, 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 some would say, did they announce a trilogy of movies before they got greenlit? It has the trilogy of movies been reduced to one movie because they realized they were in over their head? Answer they didn't have yes. enough for three movies, so they just put it into one movie. Yeah. It's like four hours long, though. Yeah. I mean, I mean, because everyone and knows. And they can't split it into two you movies because it split you well. Can't, you can't have a duality. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, and then there's like well, like, an, like a Chinese spinoff or something that's happening. I don't know what's going on with that. You know? Is it is it secretly an anime? No, but that would be cool. It's about twelve stuff going on. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm including, if I'm counting all trilogies as a separate, yeah, pieces of media. It's, 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 it's each a movie. lot. It's a lot. It's twelve. <laughs> Should all of this have happened ten years ago? Possibly. That would have capitalized off The Walking Dead because The Walking Dead at one point by far the most viewed drama on television like i would say one of the largest viewed shows on amc i mean i mean it was just like cable television in general like it was ridiculous mm -hmm. like we've at at its peak cable television has never seen something get that many people watching it ever lost maybe i don't remember like, what, what what like Peak cable TV, like Lost, Walking Dead. I know those were seen week to week. Like, we're talking about hugely. Yep. I don't know about Breaking Bad. I feel like Breaking Bad was not watched that much week to week. Um, I feel like Breaking Bad was like a, was like a later show where like, mm -hmm. like, Walking Dead caught on pretty much immediately because Walking mm -hmm. Dead kind of like almost resurrected the whole like zombie craze and just culture and just like media um but breaking bad i feel like was like a little further into it people were like oh this is good because i feel like when it first got announced no one thought it was going to be great you know it doesn't help the first couple episodes are pretty slow like you don't get to see anything going into that yeah 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 i mean also people weren't convinced that brian cranston could do a serious role because people only know him from Malcolm in the Middle, and mm -hmm. they thought, oh, he's a comedic actor. He's not 
you know, like a he dramatic was also in actor. Seinfeld as well. Doesn't help. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. So it's like, can he be this? Can he like bring something to the table? And it's like, oh, he can. It turns out that he's just a good actor. <laughs> you know, he, he's just good, and he and he can do anything. Game of Thrones. Oh, he's gone. Oh, but you see, the problem with that is like, it's a subscription. You know, it's not like like this. He's actually looking uh, at me. Cable. Is it that or, weird? Yeah, watch. Yeah. Because normally, because because you know, be pretty big on there. We have webcams, right? So it's like, ooh, what's going on here? You got a delay you know here. I, I think it was actually. Is it me? Hold on. I think my watch actually in. cut out. Ooh, here there we go. go. He's back. Okay. That was me. I, I was, was saying it earlier. That was okay. definitively my, my fault. I just want to... Well, not my fault directly, but my fault indirectly. Okay, I was saying, I'm like, saying Game no. of Thrones is big, but it wasn't... It's cable. It's not cable. Yeah, it also it's wasn't different. cable, so it's tough. It's tough yeah. to say. <laughs> because, again, getting people to watch cable every week with Insane. commercials? Crazy. Like, I got, only, like, reality TV usually does that. Usually, reality yeah, TV. reality TV, yeah. You know, that's like your survivor, your big brother. They're going mm -hmm. on. Never when American one. Idol was big. Yeah. That oh, was huge. Or like um, Housewives. Like those shows. Maybe Housewives oh, yeah. in New York or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Housewives of Mordor. Yo. Um, his name is Hodor <laughs> because he was saying hold door. Okay. The door. Yeah. All right. Um, why is his name Hodor? Well, <laughs> in season six, you're gonna find out, and it's gonna be worth it. So we hey, have Nana. No. Nana. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, Nana, episode sixteen and seventeen. This is probably my favorite of the week. The bang is um, the bangers. Yep, bangers and mash. Um, okay, so uh, I'll see my ranking real quick. It's Nana to IBO mm -hmm. to Barakamon to Summertime. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you agree or disagree with that, but uh, that is my ranking for the week. On Flip Summertime and Barakamon. Okay. It's, it's good. It's good. Uh, IBO is winning for once. And IBO W. That's true. Yeah. Oh, I did no. hear. Um, I'm excited for the end of the show, obviously, but I did hear second season not great. For uh, Gundam. For IBO. Yeah, yeah. I heard that it falls off pretty hard. <laughs> Dang, dude, that hurts. Yeah, which is disappointing. I mean, I don't think we were. We weren't gonna watch it anyway. Yeah, we weren't but gonna I mean... go into this, but like. <laughs> Now I'm like super like not wanting to go into the second season. Um, yeah, these were the two episodes, right? These were the ones where it's like stuff kind of comes out in the open. You know, Ren. We finally have like a complete story with all the characters, knowing what's going on. Nana, dude, that moment where Nana, you know, where they're both at like Nana's parents' house or their family's house. <laughs> and and like that scene i think one of the most one of my favorite i should say i you know i shouldn't say it objectively i'll say it subjectively uh one of my favorite scene. yeah it's just so good where they're like talking to each other and like we finally get that understanding right like i feel like in a lot of like media we know but yeah, nana yeah, doesn't know. right you know, right but we know the nana's stories other Nana doesn't know if she had like no one growing up <laughs> right yeah 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 I mean I feel like in a, in a lot of media and also real life um the big thing is always just communicate with each other like just talk to each other <laughs> you know <laughs> um it might, it might be scary but then you'll get an understanding of what the other person's thinking right and so that that's what happens in this in this scene where Nana you know kind of says like oh you know you never talked to me like you know i'm just really happy that you finally told me about your you know about your parent situation right how like mm -hmm. they both died or whatever i don't i don't remember exactly but mm -hmm. they're both gone no no brothers sisters anything like that and so she's crying but she's like no i'm crying because i'm happy like not happy that that happened to you but happy that you 
open up to me. That we're finally. talking about this, you know. Yeah. You're, I'm happy that you're saying this, that you feel comfortable to let me know about this. And then the other <laughs> Nana kind of opens up herself and she's like, oh, I never meant to make you feel like I don't like, I don't trust you, right? It's like, no, I'm just bad at talking and I don't really, I don't really have friends like that, you know, like. Yeah. Like you're my first girl that's a friend that I have. Exactly. All I've ever done is hang out with guys. Right. <laughs> um, and so like, I just don't know. So like, hey, if there's anything you want to know, just ask me. Like, you know, I want to have that kind of relationship with you, right? And then Nana's, <laughs> she's like, are you sure? Are you sure anything? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> oh no. And then, she, and then she, you know, you know, she asked about Ren. Um, and even that moment, I was, you know, I was like clutching the armrest, right? Because I was like, oh no, what, you know, you know, is she gonna be like upset at her or something? And then like, you, you hear, you hear the words, so you know, so you and know. Then that's that's all you need to hear. Yeah. And then they just hug it out and they talk about it. Obviously, off screen, it's not needed for yeah. us to see it, but we understand that they understand. Yeah, because, you know, I think <laughs> she's just relieved to be like, <laughs> oh, Nana knows about this. And some I stuff can is be making... a bit more open. <laughs> yeah, like I can be open <laughs> about it. Um, and just how, how good of a person, like more examples as to why she thinks Nana is a good person, because <laughs> you know from our um our omnipotence as a viewer that nana invited her to the what is it uh the concert yeah uh trap nest that's what i was thinking of yeah. in my mind i was like the band is called tailspin <laughs> not <laughs> <Squirtle> gang not <laughs> um but yeah like she she invited her to the concert i mean one just because you know she's her friend or whatever but also because oh this could be a chance for her to see ren again you know, and so like all these things are clicking in her head and, and she gets emotional. And so, yeah, very, you know, like you said, they hug it out. Very nice moment. And I feel like that was also leading to, um, I believe, the end of episode 17 where they're at the concert. And you, you can see how emotional they both are for different reasons. Um, it is a Venn diagram where some of the reasons do overlap. But um, and then, you know, you know, like Nana has the voiceover and she's like, oh, we didn't even think about it. We just kind of started, to, we, we just like held hands and we're both looking at the concert. Um, so again, very emotional. This is, you know, I, I think I mentioned it last week where I felt like last episode was like a, a turning point for the show where I feel like that was the end of an arc and this is going to be the start of a new arc. Mm -hmm. And these couple episodes, I feel like is, is, is proving it. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like we're starting somewhere with just like, again, the dynamics between different characters, the understanding, um, all that stuff. So, it's yeah. like, yeah, we're getting like another point of view here. She's like, again, Nana saying, you think I'm like a boyfriend or something? And then she's like, no, you're more than that to me. Oh, oh, <laughs> such a, such a good line. Said, no, you're way more important uh, to me than yeah. that. I'm like, Oof. Yeah. It's like, you know, like this friendship is like. In her mind, it's more permanent. Like, you know, boyfriends come and go, but, like, there's no one else, like, understands you like this. In, like, right. a weird way. Yeah, and, and, like, even for her specifically, right? Like, not only mm -hmm. because of the whole, like, Shoji situation, but, like, her whole life, she's been described as this, like, hopeless romantic. Where she just, mm -hmm. she falls in love instantly. And she can't keep a relationship, um... And so for her to have Nana, it's like, oh no, you're like you're not a boyfriend to me. Like, you are here and you listen, and like we can talk to each other about stuff. And even with these last couple episodes, like we can really talk and we can really lean on each other. Um, so yeah, very very good person to have in her life. For, well, for for both of them. Um, yeah, I do like her family. Family for, for family is very dynamic. It's got some fun dynamics there yeah. with the three mom and the two other daughters two mm -hmm. sisters oh, um it's good the mom like freaking out because they find out that nana isn't with her shoji anymore so like mm -hmm. freaking out like what are you doing why i was i was worrying so much you know if you just told me i wouldn't have to worry so much about you <laughs> just like, it's like oh you're living with her and she's like thank you for taking care of her and then yeah. it's like <laughs> yeah yeah and then her like very like anime mom thing to do to like talk to nana and be like 
I'm so sorry for her, you know, you know, I know she can be a handful. <laughs> and then and then her her daughter is standing right there, like listening to her say all these things. <laughs> Just like what are you doing? Very good. Um I don't know if you noticed this Ray, but uh there was the scene which was kind of picking up right after episode 15, so last week's, um, where Nana went to Yasu's place, mm -hmm. right? That was, that in itself was a very good scene, like, her coming over and her, like, oh yeah, wanting to talk to him, but not really saying what, and then her leaving abruptly, and then her, like, standing outside, <laughs> outside the window. Like, she, she, she looked, like, pretty upset. Well, she wanted it to look at she was like she was waiting to see if he was gonna look outside yeah he was like, he was like sending like a mental message and mm -hmm. then i don't know why like obviously... at the end of the episode though i know it's like ren's doing the same thing yeah 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 so like i don't know if you know it's the same though this this the animators just decided he's the same stuff for yasu though it's the same exact stuff yeah it's the same yeah. frames and everything nothing's changed except for like who, when he opens the door everything's exactly the same i love it so much um like even nana and ren uh answer the door in the same exact way i don't know if you know i don't know if you noticed that we're like <laughs> they were like I, I remember what they said they said like guess who or like mm -hmm. guess who's here or, or, or like something like that like, yeah, they answer in a playful way. Yeah. Yeah, but but they did. They said it the same exact way. So just like small things like that, where they are. No, like, you're watching dub, right? Yeah, yeah, the dub. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'm watching sub. I'm pretty sure they say the exact same way as well. Yeah, like yeah, it's like, it's like <laughs> the same thing. Um, yeah. Do you think? I I'll say right now. I don't think. But yeah, they ain't getting yeah no right like, like like there's no way not only because of nana being there you know new mm -hmm. new person in in nana's life but also because i just don't think that's what kind of story they're trying to tell and also like mm -hmm. i don't think i don't think nana has feelings for him anymore like, yeah well yeah ren clearly was okay giving everything up yeah yeah because I don't know, it's it's not the same as the Shoji situation, but I, you know, but I do feel like in all these flashbacks, they never showed us a conversation with Ren and Nana, where like Ren's like, "Why don't you come with me? I really want you to come with me," or like, literally just said, "I'm leaving." That's like literally said, yeah, like, "I'm going." Yeah, like, like it, you won't see me here tomorrow. Uh, and I'm not know, coming back. You know, it's not that I don't think he didn't love Nana, but I don't think it was like tearing, tearing off his other half to like follow his dream. You know, <laughs> it was just like, well, this is more important. I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> like, there know? was never a choice there. You know, it was like, yeah, this came up, so I'm doing this now. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't think. He's been spending this whole time being like, oh, "I'm gonna get her back," and I, and I don't think the I, I don't think the other way either. I feel like Nana doesn't. I think Nana understands that. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Which think is that... why she's more hurt about it on the inside. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And because she clearly likes him more than he liked her. Right. But then he still has these residual feelings, but he it's not strong enough for him though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I feel like that's true for Nana as well. Like, mm -hmm. I'm sure she still has feelings, but I feel like at least her feelings have evolved into memories. Where it's mm -hmm. like, oh, I'll always cherish the memories that I have of us both together, but I don't think I want to actually like get back into a relationship with you. You know, mm -hmm. and I, and I think that might be some of what that final scene was supposed to be implying, where it's like getting bombarded with emotions from seeing Ren again at a concert and so you know you're you're, you're crying you know you, know, you have like physical emotions but it you know it's just overwhelming it's not all right after the concert i'm gonna go find him and i'm gonna confess my love and i want him to i want us to get back together like you know i don't think that's where where her you know where like her thoughts are like if he wanted to he could have came visit at any time in theory that's true 
he could have also like contacted her like i'm sure <laughs> that other's phone number i mean they both know yasu <laughs> clearly is that is yasu hiding the fact that he meets with ren constantly probably mm-hmm. or I like would, he at least still like keeps in touch with him i would almost say yes i mean mm-hmm. maybe not well uh, may- is more ren more like don't tell anyone i'm meeting up with you I feel like it's probably might be a mix, but mm-hmm. at the very least, I feel like Yasu is is keeping the mentality that they all had when it just came to mentioning Ren, where like, uh, what's uh Nobu, right? Is that his name? I believe so. Yeah, the like blonde haired member of their group, the like other friend. Um, mm-hmm. I like the way he said it, where he was like, "We're not intentionally." not talking about ren we just feel like it'd be better if we don't talk about ren in front of nana you know you know so it's not <laughs> like they don't intentionally like, like tiptoe around the topic they just they just don't ever find a reason to talk about him because why would they do that so i feel like that's probably what yasu's doing where i i think if nana asked him and was like hey do you still keep in touch with ren he would he would probably like, say yes, yes. <laughs> but like he's not gonna be like Hey, so I uh, talked to Ren yesterday. <laughs> you know, I, you know, there's just no reason for that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that that I feel like is probably what he's like. He's, he's doing. purposely staying out of it unless ever prompted to respond to anything. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because like that to me that is, is kind of what Yasu would do. Exactly. You get, you kind of know that, yeah. That's like what kind of friend I feel like he is. Where he's like, well, I'm still friends with both of them, so you know, I'm not gonna just stop talking to one of them, but I'm also not mm-hmm. gonna purposefully make things confusing for everybody and also to be fair like ren also only to- talked to yasu about joining the other band and leaving that's true yeah yeah we did he didn't bring up anyone else <laughs> yeah so again i mean they they are all friends you know i mean technically yasu and ren were friends before mm-hmm. yasu met nana nana was the last uh to join person yeah yeah um i do also like that that flashback of like nana coming up with their their band name of just like oh blast blast sounds cool and they're like yeah it does sound cool and she's like wait these idiots <laughs> they really took Paris blast actually just blackstone cherry cigarettes yeah 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 they just took blacks and then they took stone and they're like blast got there it there you go Jeez. we did it i'm gonna make computers but it's they're gonna be called macintosh I'm like oh genius can't stop it um let's see uh oh yeah i i did have a note here ray how much i hate the misato character what's wrong with misato i just find her annoying you know like Like, do you actually like hate her or is just the energy that she has a person would just uh, tear you down just the energy i'm like i could not be in the same room with her for like 60 seconds she just like it's like if you had to you would like smile and like wave but like you would try not to communicate as much as possible yeah. and try to like leave any situation i would try to be as, as least engaging as possible you know how i don't know if you've ever done this but like you know how you do that with like people you don't want to talk to where like i'm gonna be nice but I, i'm you not give gonna them actively courtesy, like smile and be like hey in like, yeah, the hallway yeah. and then you keep walking past them or like haha yeah man <laughs> But like not actively engage in the conversation because if you do, then that's gonna then they're gonna be they like, say like, how's your day? As you're walking, by, you say good, yours, and then you just keep walking. Yeah, you like, don't even stop. Don't, you just keep walking. Don't break stride <laughs> because <laughs> if you break stride, they will see the they they, they see it as a weakness. <laughs> and they, you know, but yeah, like that's that's how I feel about the Masato character because it's just like they they're just too much about Nana. You know, it's like. That, to be fair, she's like a super fan, which I, which I don't like. <laughs> you know, she's a super fan. She's annoying. She's annoying, and like also she's like, like they haven't performed in forever. Yeah, she gets so excited <laughs> about everything. It's like I don't know. Like, live your own life. You know, her life is dedicating to being Nana's boots on the ground. Boots on the ground. Pants on the ground. Boots Have you ever watched? Uh, you ever watched Pop Star? Andy Samberg, Lonely Island. Okay, I did not watch Popstar. I've seen like some of the music videos though. Mm. Pretty the good. Music video, I think about that one every now and then. Pretty funny. Pretty good. 
Um, uh, I don't know if I have anything else. It's pretty much the episode. He's a pop star? Is he, this is the, like, the league disease on my mind. I thought a KDA pop star. Very different uh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Wildly very, different. Very different and, then, and then you said like uh, Andy Samberg and Liliana, and I was like, oh, snap back to reality. <laughs> it's all <almost laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's league of Legends on that mind. Uh, but yeah, good episodes. Very much enjoying the show. Um, at this point, I feel like it's a it's a pleasant surprise. Whenever I remember, oh yeah, there's still a lot of the show left. Which like, if 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 I wasn't enjoying it, it'd be like, I'd be like, hey Ray, why don't why don't we just stop watching the show? <laughs> Think Nana's like 40 episodes long, something like that. Yeah, it's good. I'm I'm still here for it. You know. It's like, to be fair though, like we haven't had that discussion on, at least for these shows, where we're like, we just stop watching. Yeah, I mean, because I feel like no show we've watched so far has been bad. Like, I definitely wasn't like a fan of the Rock and Go one. Like, the further it went on, I was like, eh, take it or leave it. But like, I, I didn't think it was a bad show, and I wasn't like actively disliking it. You know? You're not ready for that season two. We're, no, there's no more flashback. It's only in modern rock ago. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna respectfully decline. Um, we do uh, Brockamon, episode seven and eight. You, your notes are not ranking. What? I'm sorry. Notes are not really here for eight. You got like mostly seven notes. It's insane. Is that true? Listen, man, I just I just take notes, you know? If nothing happened in 8 that I felt was important, I didn't write it down. All right, okay. That's fair. Based on our ranking, you liked Brockamon at least a little better than I did this week. There's, there's a, I like the just a little bit. Because summertime is build up right now, right? So summertime just gets straight to the bottom. There is a couple stuff in there that's interesting, but, like, it's mostly just... <laughs> Why'd you stop talking? <laughs> you could clearly see I was gonna do something. Why didn't you keep talking? <laughs> I'm just, just gonna sit in silence. <laughs> so, <laughs> why did you stop? Because I saw you take the headphones off. It was so. <laughs> right, this, is, this is so funny. All right, we're just gonna keep going because otherwise it's not gonna work. It's all right. So yeah. My explanation's not gonna be given here because he's just doing this thing. It's crazy that he thinks he can get away with this. I'm not trying to dog summertime at all. But that's what all I gotta say is uh info dump just you just went to the bottom, that's it. <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> what? You're the worst. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. I thought that was like a bit or something. I was like, <laughs> Raymond figured, trashing oh, summertime yeah. rendering, I taking figured, the headphones oh, yeah. off. I'm, I'm going to do this just real quick. Ray will keep talking. You know, he, he, he <laughs> just started talking about Brockamon. I, I got a good 30 seconds. And then you just halted. You just, you, you just, you just hit the eject. <laughs> and it was dead silent. <laughs> <laughs> you saw me just like straight up stop talking and stare at you. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> We it's are professional good. podcasters. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. There was no prompt or anything. I was like, oh. Like, like, in, in my mind, I was like, oh, should should I say, hey, Ray. But, it, <laughs> you know, but then I was like, oh, it, it, it'll be real seamless, right? Ray will just keep talking. I'll do what I'm doing. I'll come back. No one will know anything happened, right? And then you stopped. <laughs> See, see, see that, that's the difference, right? Because I'm here like saying, like, oh, I'm talking about how I didn't like Summertime Rendering that much this week. So then you pop mm. the headphones off immediately. <laughs> so I'm like, he doesn't want to hear it. <laughs> 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 so I'm just going to stay quiet and watch him in silence until he comes back so I can rant a little bit about the info dump thing again. Mm. We're just two different people. <laughs> That, that was what was in my mind. I'm just like, you know, it's like the moment yeah. you pop, I said, so like, yeah, so I didn't really like summertime. And then you just took the headphones. 
It's kind of let's, that was good. The comedy writes itself. <laughs> it, it could have been seamless, but it you know turned into a good bit. You know, so that's that's the best case scenario. Um, so Barack Obama, um got the mega lure. The fishing, mega fishing is episode seven. Episode seven's fishing. That was good. Oh yeah, because like, what was episode eight? Well, you have the uh, the catching the bug for the birthday, but then the second half of the episode is like uh, the they're fizzing the grapes. Not like they're by the grandmother's mm-hmm. grape, like the mm-hmm. entire part of that. Yeah, that that, that just kind of went in and went out. You know, didn't didn't really retain any of that. Okay. Um, it's like oh, there's a little there's a little bit happens there. Naru continues to be my favorite character. She's kind of the powerhouse. She's the best, yeah. She she's definitely, she's definitely the anchor of the show. Um, you know, you mentioned the whole super lure thing. Love that bit. That was great, right? You know, just them them catching fish in general. You know, I like how they set it up where they start catching fish, everything is good, and the one character I forget her name. She's like, huh? Everything's going great. Isn't that weird? You know, because like with these cast of characters, it's like you expect something to go wrong, and then immediately, <laughs> like something goes wrong right where it's like they one guy loses his glasses one guy gets like the fish stuff all over him you know mm-hmm. it's like ah oh, you couldn't you couldn't have just stayed quiet <laughs> you know somehow even fishing they like turn into this whole ordeal um I and mean, then yeah we do have the whole super lore thing which is not because like you know we mentioned it before where it's it's nice to see a, a kid in just any media really just acting like a kid and not acting how like someone thinks a kid acts <laughs> mm-hmm. you know where it's like oh yeah a kid would do that where they're like oh what if what if we just take all the hooks <laughs> put them together <laughs> we'll catch a hundred fish <laughs> and like kid and like that makes perfect sense with with dumb kid logic right because you're mm-hmm. like oh one hook catches one fish therefore um so yeah that, that was cool and then for them to actually catch a fish with it and then immediately lose the fish <laughs> it was you know it was was very cool and you know i like how they're not like upset they, they're all immediately just like laughing at themselves just like how stupid that was just like the... yeah they already got like a bunch of fish already yeah so they just, have a lot just missed one it was a good one though but they all you know <laughs> the absurdity of them using the lure actually <laughs> catching something and then obviously that that the structural integrity of that monstrosity <laughs> was not very high you know um so that was really cool um you had the little pokemon text come up on screen when she picked up the stick yeah yeah she picked up the, <laughs> yeah yeah i couldn't read it because they didn't uh didn't translate that part but uh i kind of got the gist of it right i was getting like fan subs so like they cleaned that up uh gotcha nice <laughs> Um, I don't understand. Is this like, was there a joke I was missing or was the joke that there wasn't a joke with the whole like metal detector thing? The joke, I guess, was that like, they were just making fun of like what was like trying to beat for each person. So they're like, the glasses got him. Like, it was one of those things where... (laughs) I didn't get why it was funny, but it kept happening to the point where I thought it was funny. Where it's like, I don't know why this is funny, but it's making me laugh now. It's like, hey, the metal detector got one off. It must be his glasses. And then they skin the glasses. They're laughing. Ah, oh, the metal glasses got the metal detector. Yeah. Then yeah, the yeah. other guy goes through. And I forgot what set it off that time. Mm-hmm. But then when Naru goes through, we I don't even know what set that one off. They're like, she doesn't even have metal on her. Yeah, yeah. It's it uh, just like, I, I don't get why this is funny, but like, it is one of those things where... You, you have your friends that just find something funny and it's like if you tried to explain it to another person why you're laughing you couldn't explain it you're just gonna know there's like seven layers that are like all 25. dumber than the last one yeah yeah i mean that's a perfect example of the whole like 24 25 thing it's like spongebob and patrick could not explain to someone else why that's funny but to them it makes perfect sense why they're laughing so i imagine it's probably something like that But it did get me eventually yeah. because it was just like, look at him, look at him, look at him. He's gonna go through. Oh, it's beeping. <laughs> She's like, okay, okay, that, that's funny. You got me, you know. Um, and, and and then again, Naru holding the show down in that little airport scene. Um, 
she goes crazy because she wanted to buy the like sunglasses and mustache thing. Yeah. And uh, Honda was like, no, we're not. I'm not buying it for you. Can't do it. And then she like puts it's like the the like Miles Morales meme. When Miles Morales puts his hand on, on, on Gwen's shoulder. Um, yeah. Naru does that and like squeezes his shoulder and she's like, you don't understand. <laughs> They're just like, this is all I ever wanted. What is this scene? <laughs> this is the it's only so thing funny. I've ever wanted in my life. And he's like, I'll buy it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cause she's like, I have to give this to, uh, to, uh, like the one friend i forget his name uh but yeah it, 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 give it to the friend because it'll be funny and he's <laughs> like you're right <laughs> and then and, and then it does cut to later with uh you know both of them on the plane and like he is wearing the sunglass and mustache things so like ah that was good that was good she was able to deliver it um that reminds me it didn't happen in these episodes but i don't think we talked about it um when honda it was probably like episode three or something like that he got the like pickled onions. He oh was, yeah, like, addicted to them. Have you ever had pickled onions? Red kimchi. It's okay. not the same. Is it similar? I'll be honest, Ray. Don't know what kimchi is. Kimchi is like Korean pickled vegetables, or like pickled like uh, not onion, but like I'll say lettuce. Kimchi, okay. ferment. Kimchi is fermented cabbage. Cabbage. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Cabbage, radish, cucumber. The stuff is, I mean, I think I could just eat kimchi by itself. That's kind of terrible, to be honest. Because, like, usually it's a little spicy, but because, like, it's, like, soaking in, like, the liquid. So, so it's only maybe, like, a little spicy, but, like, I could eat, like, maybe, like, all kimchi, and that would not be good for my stomach. Sure, yeah, I imagine. Yeah, the only pickled thing I've had is pickles. Or pickled cucumbers. Um, pretty good. Yeah, pickled I guess. beans? No. Beans think or beets? Pickled anything else. Yeah. Uh, peppers? Pickled peppers? Uh, hmm. I don't like anything else that's pickled that you may possibly eat. But you know that, like, at least here in America, right? The only country right. that matters. Um, pickled onions is probably like the second most popular pickled thing behind like pickles, pickled cucumbers, you know, N never had them though, but I, I would just mention it cause I was like, you know, he was like going crazy over them and I was like, oh, I wonder if that's actually like good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure it's good cause it's, you know, people eat them all the time, but for me, I wonder if I would like it, you know? Yeah. What's it like? I like the, the... Like the Indian supermarkets, they got like their different chutneys and pickled like stuff they got there. Yeah. Like the, the I like the mango pickle a lot. Oh, okay. Okay. The mango pickle chutney. That stuff is delicious. I didn't have too much of that actually. Nice. Sounds good. Do you have like do you have like a favorite food? Or like or like a favorite meal, right? Where you're like go to. No. <laughs> mm. That's a weird compound answer. To just say no. Mm. And not like have any explanation. I don't think I have anything like I super like crave. And it's like this is like food for me. I would say like for me it's not like super specific. But I would say like any day of the week some sort of like chicken and rice combination. Good stuff. I approved you. That stuff's like good. Chicken yeah. rice is good. Maybe have some sort of vegetable with it or something, you know, just to get veggies in there because, you know, those are important. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably say that. Like, with that stuff, though, like, I mean, like, for me, I've been more like, whenever I have, like, let's say, like, wild rice with, like, chicken and, like, veggies, mm -hmm. I've been more on the veggie side for that for some reason. Yeah. Like, I'll be taking less chicken now, like recently, and I'll put more veggies. Like, it just tastes better. I don't mm. know. No, no, I, I totally get that. <laughs> um, I feel like as an adult, you kind of respect 
vegetables a lot more. It's like, oh, ve vegetables are actually pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty Maybe just be getting older. <laughs> yeah. Especially when I was younger, it'd be like, I'll have a little bit of but then I'll have like a big piece of meat. <laughs> I mean, is that thing. I feel like we've talked about that on here before. The like propaganda in cartoons, like, you know, about like vegetables. It's like, oh, all vegetables are disgusting. Kids don't like vegetables. And it's like, no, they're actually pretty good. Kids don't know what they like. It's pretty good. And it, and it, it comes out that kids just don't know what they like. You know, like, like Brussels think, sprouts, if you cook them right, pretty good. Top tier. I think you can give a kid anything. Kids are stupid. You can give a kid any food as long as you don't tell them what it is. Yeah, that's true. Like, like if you're feeding your kid food, like as long as they're between like I'll say like zero to like five, you can feed them pretty much anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's also the time to do it, right? You, like just yeah. expose them to everything you can. Just put them anything. Yeah. Like, you don't like this? Then you just give it to them in some other way. Like, oh, I think I have it like this. Boom, you ate it. Congratulations. Trick yeah. I think it's. So my a... mom got my brother to eat eggs. <laughs> oh, well. Uh... He doesn't eat them. Like, most time. I think we've. Maybe we've discussed this before. Like, you've seen him eat. This guy, like, he does not want eggs. Mm -hmm. But like, if you like order Chinese food, you have the eggs and the rice. That's good. Apparently, that's good. If my mom makes eggs and like puts it in like Chinese food, like like if she makes like fried rice or something, he's not eating that. <laughs> but if he orders it from a restaurant, those eggs are a game. <laughs> I, mean, I think there is some like psychology there, right? I mean, because putting stuff in other stuff. Cause like, I don't really like mushrooms. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm you know I'm pretty like indifferent towards them. Mm -hmm. But like you know, you if you chop it up and like put it in something else. Like a mushroom and like a soup, like a chicken mushroom soup. You'll be like. Yeah, like a of... soup or like some sort of like noodle thing. I'm like okay, I can, I can trick my brain into eating this. You know, mm -hmm. like there are some things out there where it's like. I will completely reject this. There's no way you can hide this from me. If if I taste this, it will not be a good time, you know. Um, me putting a bunch of cinnamon inside the fried rice to mess with Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but like I feel like I maybe told you this before, but like cheese, best thing ever, right? Cheese is great, and just pretty cheese much good. any form. But uh, ricotta cheese, can't eat it. I've tried a million times. You yeah. tried the spoonful, it just doesn't work. Yeah, I've taken a spoon. <laughs> that is psychotic. If, if I did that, my body would reject it. Like, immediately. You know, I, there are people, though, I have read and seen people taking the ricotta cheese, drizzling honey on top of that, and putting them in their mouth. Now, I've seen this propaganda, and I want to commit myself to at least trying it like that. I feel like I've seen that more with, like, cottage cheese. Cottage cheese? Okay. Yeah, not ricotta cheese, though. Okay. But, maybe yeah. I mixed it up in my head. Maybe. Ricotta cheese I don't think I've ever had. I'd, I'd probably like that, but ricotta cheese, I, I want to like it. I want to do it. You tried it, can't. you tried it. My body's just like, no. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trap. It's a trap. Um, How does that make you feel with lasagna? Because I think lasagna is a lot of ricotta. Yeah, that's the thing, man. I want to like lasagna. If you cook lasagna without it, all for it. You cook it with it it's a lot of like trying to pick around it and you know it's tough if you really get i don't think i'm a big lasagna guy but not for ricotta cheese i just don't think i'm a big lasagna guy <laughs> yeah that's probably like one of my least favorite ways to have noodles you know but i go for more of like a like a ziti or something like that more so i'll have a big ziti dude yeah real good but it's always just like hard to eat you know, because it is like a cake, right? You gotta like it's slice layered, through right? it, and it's just like, ah, it's, it's too much work. Yeah, you got pasta. I like a, I'm a big fan of earthy pastas, like so, like you said, mushrooms, but like adding like peas in there. Yo, yeah, Some dude. pesto. Yes. Pesto and like a little bit of alfredo. Yup. Going that's Perfect. like a little bit of chicken, cut that up in there. Yup. That's like, that's a, a, go, a standard go to Raymond pasta if mm -hmm. you wanna. It's very simple. 
No, yeah, that's uh, that's, that's definitely ten out of ten. Yeah, that's good. That's good. You you do need the mushrooms and the peas in there to make that earthiness. Mm -hmm. So that is a that's a Raymond go-to pasta. Very simple to do, and it, it makes you feel a bit refined for mm. the youth I am. I'm like, oh, this is like. <laughs> Last name Ramsey. Raymond Ramsey over here. Um, uh, yeah. And then uh, I do like, uh, again, with the whole Nauru thing, like, Nauru's birthday and like Honda. I, I forget exactly what Honda gave her. It was like some sort of like coupon thing or something. He gave her a. You can order me to do anything one time use coupon. And then she, I do everyone love that. was like, this is a terrible gift. And then she's like, this is the best gift and then, ever. Yeah, I just love the way it's <laughs> shot because like it does close in on like the other people and, and and you know, like the one girl's like, Hey no, you can like lay into him if you want. You know, like you can really give it to him if you, <laughs> you want. Can, like, and then it cuts, so stupid. it cuts to Naru and she's like, She just saw God. <laughs> she's like <laughs> she's never been happier in this moment. <laughs> Um, so it's yeah. like you've just met this man in the past couple months and you are already like <laughs> very funny yeah I'm sure um, I hope that we'll see her like redeem that in a very like fun way like, it, hey. we get to see like the spare keys everyone has there's like four of them going around and he's like where's the fifth one and they're like we lost it <laughs> <laughs> oh no so how do you guys want to get in here? Oh, we got spare keys. We made these before you moved in. Yeah. Don't bother changing the locks. Well, no. <laughs> wait, wait, so everyone? Everyone just has access? <laughs> <laughs> so you lost one of my keys? I mean, so, someone out there. Some, some, some hooligan. Some freak has this key. Yeah. Using this for nefarious purposes. Um... And then, uh, so clearly I missed this, the second half, right? Anything, uh, anything well, We got notable? the funeral. There's, like, a little bit here where, like, you know, it, it was a thing that, yeah. I want to say it's Oban Festival. I don't know if that's right. Oban. Festival. I'm Googling right now, just to clarify. Oh, no. It is the Oban festival. It is remembering the deceased ancestors. There we go. I'm oh, so good. Yeah. So this is like it takes place in like August or July is usually when it takes place. So like I'm dating it, to kind of. I don't know when they perform it, but they usually pick July or August and they perform the Oban. So like they're like honoring in this case Naru's grandmother. It's like a lot of people from town are coming in to visit the grave or whatever. But it's not only honoring her. It's like I was everyone honoring everyone who's dead and passed away. Mm -hmm. so a lot of people just live in the cemetery, but like him and Naru, like Han and Naru, just like they're basically staying at like the grave all day. <laughs> they're like you know they they meeting up with like their friends or whatever, or coming to visit. And then like Naru actually does like Han that thinks about Naru, he's like I actually don't know anything about her parents, or like who takes care of her. It's like all I know is that she literally just hangs out with me all day. <laughs> mm. it's, like I don't actually know about her home situation. <laughs> Just a, little, just a little revelation to him. He's like, I guess, like, I'll continue taking care of her then. <laughs> yeah. You might as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's good. I like that. Yeah. Well, you know, everyone, everyone from the village, you know, comes over, you know, they're doing stuff with them. Hanging out. And, then, like, they, like, her granddad's still not back yet. And then he's like, and the, the way they're doing it is, like, he's like, the lantern went out. So all the lanterns are out. And he's like, well, then I guess I gotta go back to Granddad. And he's like, well, he's not here yet. So, and then he just lights the one lantern back up. And he's like, we'll just wait here for a bit more and longer. So, just so like that way, like he's still looking over Naru while the grandpa's still like busy. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you know, a little sweet action. <laughs> nice. Okay. A, little, a little heartfelt moment. <laughs> yeah. I feel like this show has done a pretty good job at that. Like mm -hmm. balancing the comedic stuff with the more, more mm -hmm. like emotional stuff. I think it's done a pretty good job so far. Like it's not even like a heavy emotional, but it's like it makes you feel good watching it. You're like yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 
You pull, you're like, yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's, good it's, on that. Yeah. It's good, it's good stuff. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's good. Um, it's like, you know, like, you know, he's like, he's like, you know, he's like, I'm not only being nice to this kid, you know, he's like, I'm also like, kind of like watching over it for a bit and let me do this real quick, you know? It makes her a bit happier. And then, like, obviously, like, also, like, not like doing anything wrong, which, you know, it's like a festival, you know, they're all like having fun. So, uh, firecrackers and whatnot. The other two high school girls come by and they're hanging out with them for the most part. It's good. That is like a nice, um, a nice aspect to this show. <laughs> like, like the whole village feeling like just like one big family almost. Yeah, no, in this like episode, that. yeah. It's just, it's just another stamp on that, you know, mm-hmm. where it's like everyone's coming by just to see Naru, like, at her grandma's grave. Mm, nice. Um, did you already talk about, <clears throat> you said earlier you had something else uh, with Hunger Games? Did you already talk about nah, that? No, that was it. That, that was literally it. Oh, you did? Okay. I didn't know if there was. Okay. Gotcha. Um, thanks for that, though. That was nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, we are, uh, like I said, we are pretty close to finishing all of our shows. Uh, well, not all of them. Uh, well, Brockamon's going to end sooner than the rest. Yeah, Brockamon's in a couple weeks. And then Summertime and, uh, Gundam in a couple weeks after that. So, this mm-hmm. time, a month from now, we'll have three new shows. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, so uh, we should already kind of mentally prepare ourselves for post Brockamon. Well, I, well... I should have some ideas, Ray. I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you later. All right. A- after the episode, I've uh, some kind of fun stuff I've been thinking about. So, tighten uh, up the storm. Uh, yeah. Mentally, yeah. So it's like I've already got my idea, but I just haven't put it down yet. Yeah, well, you know. Who needs computers when you have the best computer? <laughs> You, fair, fair, you remember in school when you're when you like learn that like dude your brain is as powerful as a hundred super or supercomputers or like something like that you were like whoa that's crazy technically my brain. correct Te- technically correct and then you just see like all like the and you just remember like all, all the dumb things you say or think throughout the day and you're like hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> our brain came up with that with that fact <laughs> Dude, okay, this is like a legit thing. Like I've been noticing for like whenever I'm going to bed or when I'm tired, my brain loses it and I'll come up with like weird things in my head. Like I'll say something. These things will come out of my mouth, by the way. There's like my head is like going like super weird places. It's like, yeah, we should definitely like hide this is me just trying to come up with a fake one. But, like, it's like, yeah, we should definitely go and impersonate Barney the dinosaur and, like, commit crimes. It's like when my brain does when it's going to bed. But, like, yeah. not really do that. It doesn't, like, really say... Yeah, it says sure. some wild stuff, though. And yeah. I'm like... I'm like... And then, like, I... And my brain w- wakes up a bit after that and it's like, what are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? I'm like, I know I'm tired, but, like, that's not, like, my... Like, I have the hidden point and I'm like... I don't know what I could possibly be dreaming. <laughs> like, that's, like, leading into the dream. Yeah. Or something like that. But, I, like, my brain wakes up after that and is like, I don't want to know what happens. If, like, it's slept. Dude, it's crazy. <laughs> if you had, like, a like a sketch show, it'd be, like, prime <laughs> idea time, right? You just write down all, like, the weird <laughs> thoughts you have in the next day. You're like, all right, let's start. Let's start filming some sketches with, with dreams. I'll see right. if I can, like, write some down. But, like, I've noticed for like a couple days where like they were pretty crazy. I don't remember any of them, but I remember going to bed and being like, what am I thinking? Mm-hmm. I like, um, I feel like everyone has this, but, um, shower time is like mm-hmm. the absolute clearest my brain ever is. Where like in the shower, I'll be like, here's all these ideas I have for different things. And then I'm like, why, why can't I think like this? 
throughout the rest it's of the day. It's kind of sad. Let me think of it. Because, like, shower time is the only point where you actually have, like, you're nothing else to idle. You're just you and your thoughts. Yeah. When you're out of the shower, you are constantly bombarded by information, and you can never have a piece of moment. No piece of time or anything just to you. It's kind yeah. of a sad reality, man. Yeah, it's because, like, in the shower, there's no expectations. You know, it's like I'm here for a purpose and I am I'm doing that. But when you're out of the shower, it's like, OK, well, there's all these things I could be doing. I don't have time to think, you know, where it's like in your shower, it's like it is a reprieve from life. Where it's just like, hey, no one, no one can expect anything out of me for the next 10 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever. Like, you know, let me hear what it is. I'm a long shower guy, but like all I do is think about my thoughts and it's scary. <laughs> how long do you think you shower for 30 40 minutes jesus christ i probably my, mine are probably but like, like that that's like that that's like me letting my mind wander if sure, i'm sure, actually sure. showering it's like seven minutes in and out jesus christ <laughs> there are extremes both way mine are probably consistently like 20 minutes i would say it's like the mind wandering the shower i, I wander quite a bit <laughs> yeah but like if I'm like oh, I gotta do something real quick, I gotta like hop and hop out. Ah, uh, <laughs> mm. um, yeah. It's a terrifying skill. Yeah. <laughs> Are you not scared of people who share quickly? They they have nothing to fear. <laughs> I mean, listen, yeah, there's some times where I'm like, I don't know, you shower that quick. I have so many things to do <laughs> when I'm in the shower. I can't shower that quick. What if I was bald? I would just hit three minutes shower. Oh, dude. Speed running, dude? Oh, man. That's why I love, like, after I get a haircut, I'm like, oof. Gotta use just, like, a little <laughs> drop of shampoo. It's so good. <laughs> See, the shampoo efficiency has went up today. Yeah. The little and drop, it's so and also yeah, drying your hair so much quicker yeah you're just like boom done yeah because there's less hair to dry like i actually have to get a haircut soon probably probably this weekend i'm gonna get my hair cut probably get mine tomorrow Ooh. Well, i'm gonna do mine later then all right i'm gonna do mine later we're today. not gonna meet up in the same place at all that's how it's gonna happen anyway I'm going to show up at your door tomorrow and be like, all right, Ray, let's go. Let's go get haircuts. <laughs> I don't know if you know. I, like, moved. <laughs> Actually, I think you you've already talked about it. Yeah, I moved. Like, I'm not, like, at the old place anymore. Mm. <laughs> you, it's, you, you think that'll stop me. So I have to send you a new address for you to show up at. <laughs> mm -hmm. What if I show up at your old address and I'm just like, yeah, uh, there, there's people that lived here before you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know where they went? And then we become best friends. And then we start a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was where the bit was going, but I had to let it happen. I let it run. It, it's, it's funny because I didn't know that's where it was going <laughs> until I said it. <laughs> you knew before I it's did. It's crazy. I read your mind. Mm. I'm that good. I'm that guy. Mm. I'm sort of an empath. <laughs> I can send you feel a little bit of hostility yeah. from you. Art? Wait, I'm pretty sure empaths are just like feelings, <laughs> not thoughts. Feel, feel a bit of hostility from you. Sure, you're not a bit angry right now. <laughs> I'm an empath, don't you see? <laughs> yeah, I can. Okay, see, I'm an empath, so I I, I can sense you get a little angry right now, <laughs> a little upset. It's holding like a knife, <laughs> ready to go. It's an empath though, like. No, you don't understand. I'm an empath. <laughs> some guy's trying to rob you. You're like, I'm an empath. I can sense some hostility and anger from you real quick. <laughs> we just all calm down and just like understand each other a bit. I just like the response to anything. I'm an empath. <laughs> just like, it doesn't, I don't, you know. I'm just an like empath. Saying, I understand what you're going through right now. You just say that in like the most uh, random situations. Where like, you know, like you're on like some like public transportation, you're on like a train or something and like mm -hmm. someone unfortunately starts to have a heart attack and like someone's like, oh my God, is there a doctor? And you're like, 
I'm an empath. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we need a doctor. I'm feeling his energy, and I, his energy saying he's gonna be fine right now. <laughs> and when I think I, we let this one out. <laughs> what I'm getting from him, it's not looking good. <laughs> and I'm just like, because if we get this guy out of here, because <laughs> like you bring a lot of negative energy here. <laughs> this guy's an idiot. <laughs> I think that's it, right? That's all I got. Pretty good. Hey, man, I'll say it since we're at the end. Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good? Pretty good? No, no, I'm just saying, like, um... I mean, first off, banger episode. I mean, we're, 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 we're geniuses. No, but, uh... Didn't have... Fit. Didn't have crazy internet issues <laughs> today. That was good, right? I think there was, like, one time that my internet went out, and I apologize for it like an illusion it doesn't really count it's like a yeah, myth or something it doesn't count you know i'm an empath so i know that um yeah that's uh that's gonna be it for today um like i said we're getting close end of our shows everyone watch for next week so we got 18 and 19 for everything except for brock come on it's gonna be 9 and 10 um so we end that ibo summertime rendering and nana hitting 18 and 19 back to back and then just to clarify those three because Tyler is at uh yeah. my episodes we're good <laughs> yep um and yeah just start thinking about listen guys i'll be honest we're just gonna pick the shows but it would still be cool if you guys like you know there are there any shows you want to see us maybe do? if you comment there's a chance yeah we pick it <laughs> yeah. and and just that, that increases our viewer interaction to like 100 percent. so like <laughs> Listen, guys, we're empaths, so if you just feel like you want to watch a certain show, we'll know. We'll know. Yeah. Don't like or comment on the video unless you feel like you can really help engage yeah. two terrible yeah. content creators who have no appreciation for art or class or talent at all. Yeah. Um, and honestly, just make fun of everything they're watching uh, with terrible or bad jokes half the time. I need everyone who's listening to this to watch every YouTube video and hit dislike on every video on YouTube except for ours. Yeah, we don't ask you to like our videos. We ask yeah. you to dislike everyone else's. Yeah. I feel like that's a that's good also compromise. another form of equality. Yeah. You don't have to interact. You don't have to interact with us. All we're asking is to negatively interact with everyone else. You know, cause controversy with other creators. You know, yeah. gaslight them, if you will. Gatekeep them from our content. Yeah, we don't. We don't need them. You know. Uh, so anyway. In case that wasn't obvious, that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. Not I'm not putting out an apology video for this. That was a joke. <laughs> Unless. Um, unless. Unless I cut the episode before Ray said that. No, I didn't. We're, we're still here. Um, but no, yeah, that's that's good. Good time. Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in, as they would say. And uh, thank you, Raymond, for being here. I'm always here. What a stark difference. Tony Stark. Tony and just, like, and just like Tony Stark, we're now going to die. 